Hi folks, Technivorous here. Welcome to my Kira playlist. Before we get started, hit that subscribe button so you can find your way back here. I update often. That said, as you may have noticed, Kira settings can be very simple or very in-depth. So I took the time to make a video about each section in the custom settings menu, and I'm going to quickly go over the important settings each section contains and briefly explain them. Are you ready? Good. Let's go. This is Kira settings in five minutes or less. Finally, we have come to my other favorite settings section, and that is going to be experimental mode. Uh, there is a ton of stuff in here. Let's find that. There we go. Experimental. And I'm actually going to go ahead and click in here so we can see all of them. There are quite a few. Tree support is my favorite uh, support to use. I, I generally use that instead of using the regular support in Kira. Uh, we will go over videos of both of them, a tree support and regular support video, but pay attention for the tree support video. It seems to use a little bit less filament on the average, and I think it is a better system. The interface with the model is a little bit better, and I tend to prefer using this. So there is also a bunch of other settings. You can adjust the slicing tolerance, top surface skin line width. There are infill travel optimization that is one that can actually if you're not careful add time it says right here the time to slice the model may be greatly increased uh, and that is for no models that have many small areas of infill so pay attention to that if your time is exceedingly high and you have that turned on that may be one of the culprits auto temperature is pretty simple and self-explanatory so are most of these other ones draft shield is one of the ones that i wanted to talk about here for printing abs if you don't have an enclosure for your machine enabling the draft shield does wonders for keeping your prints from lifting and peeling printing with abs it won't make perfect prints as well if they it, it won't make perfect huge prints as well as an enclosed machine will but if it's a small to medium sized print it will do just as good of a job as a fully enclosed machine if you enable the draft shield and basically what it does is builds a perimeter wall around the outside of the model to keep cold air from blowing across it and altering the temperature between the nozzle and the print bed which is where you get your warpage and your cracking and your layer separation and that's nasty business you got to start over and we don't want that so uh, enable coasting coasting replaces the last part of an extrusion path with a travel path basically this means it doesn't keep pushing filament out it will slowly instead stop pushing filament which means that you don't really need to use retraction as well so using retraction and enable coasting is basically the same thing it won't still be pushing filament out by the end of the travel distance so you're not going to be oozing and blobbing everywhere. There are a bunch of other settings such as spaghetti infill which is a really interesting one. I plan on doing a video on this as well just to show you what it looks like inside but basically it just kind of prints random infills inside and they stick to each other and creates a blob of curled up stuff that kind of looks like spaghetti. So that one will be an interesting video to watch. I'd like to time lapse it and kind of watch it grow really slowly. Fuzzy Skin is a video that I have done before, but we are going to be doing another one soon about the Fuzzy Skin outside only. That is one of the new features with this version of Kira, and what it does is the same thing as Fuzzy Skin mode, but it doesn't put the fuzz in holes. So if you need parts to fit, you can designate a hole, and it will not put the Fuzzy Skin inside it. So that's kind of cool as well. The rest of these are the settings you need to adjust for the fuzzy skin, the point distance, the density, things like that. You can get some pretty cool textures on your model playing around with that, so I do use it once in a while. Uh, wire printing is an interesting one. I have never had a successful wire print. I've tried it a couple times. If you want to see this in action, I definitely recommend checking out Chuck Hellebuck's video over on CHEP on wire printing. He did a Spider-Man bust that was pretty amazing. But basically it is exactly what it says it is. It's going to print a wireframed object of your model. So the outer perimeter and in a wireframe type fashion. So the rest of these WP are for wire printing here. And we are getting to the end. There are a couple of new other new settings in here. Enable uh, bridge settings. I want that on because I'm going to play with that later. But there are bridge settings for the infill now as well, which is interesting, and that is a new addition in 4.5. And then there are these wipe maneuvers. 
So with all this stuff, the small feature speed, small hole max size, things like that, lots of different little uh, things that don't really have a home in here. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.